Hey there! The best way to learn Visual Basic for Applications programming, or any kind of programming for that matter, is to work with a specific case or project. In this video, I will walk you to a very silly example, prime factorization. Looking back at my time in elementary school, one of the most tedious homeworks I would get in mathematics was prime factorization. Now, if it's been a while since you've been to elementary school and don't quite remember the details, then Khan Academy has a nice video which can bring you up to speed. In short, prime factorization involves taking an integer x and disaggregate it until we find the set of prime numbers which can be multiplied together in order to obtain the initial number x. So for instance, if x is equal to 75, its prime numbers or list of prime numbers would be equal to 3, 5 and 5. 3 times 5 times 5 is equal to 75. To start programming in Excel, open up a new workbook and then you hit Alt F11. This will open up the VBA editor, the Visual Basic Applications editor. In order to start a new module where we're going to write the script, we can click on Insert and then on Module. And then we can start typing the code. So for instance, we are going to make a function that can perform prime factorization. So we write function and then we need to come up with a valid name such as prime factorization, open parenthesis, and parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, we need to provide the list of input variables and specify their data type. And outside the parenthesis, we need to specify the data type of the output of the function. So the input, let's call it, uh, let's call it uh, x, and it's going to be an integer, as integer. And the output is going to be a list of, uh, of prime numbers, uh, perhaps delimited somehow. So we're going to make a string as string. And then you can hit enter and VBA will automatically add the end function at the end of the script. The rest of the script needs to be between these two lines, function and end function. And next we just have to start writing the code. Now, the problem is that we can't just tell Excel to factorize the integer x. That would not work. So instead, we need to take the process of factorization and break it down continuously into smaller and smaller components until we reach subcomponents or sub 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 components which x is actually able to perform. Hence, most of the work required to do programming is not happening in the script editor. It is happening cognitively, using your head. Before we move on, we need to introduce some terminology. Let x be an integer that we want to factorize, and let i be an integer we suggest as a possible factor of x, such as i is in the element from 2, 3, 4, all the way up to x. Based on this notation, we can make a flowchart. We start by setting i equal to 2. Then we ask ourselves, is x equal to 1? If the answer is yes, then we terminate the algorithm. On the other hand, if the answer is no, we divide x by i. And then we ask ourselves, is x divisible by i? And in mathematics, we can do that by asking if uh, x mod i is equal to zero. If that's the case, then that means that i is a factor of x. So we document i as a factor, and we set x equal to x divided by i, and we loop back up to the top of the flowchart where we set i equal to 2. However, if the answer to whether or not x mod i is equal to 0 is no, then that means that i was not a factor of uh, x. In that case, we need to increment i by setting i equal to i plus 1. And we loop back up to the top, or almost to the top, where we ask ourselves if x is equal to 1. And that is the entire algorithm. Let's take a look at an example. Let x be equal to 12. We start our factorization process by setting i equal to 2. Then we ask, is x equal to 1? And the answer is no. 12 is not equal to 1. Then we divide x by i, or we, um, more precisely, we divide 12 by 2. Then we ask ourselves, is x mod i equal to 0? Or in other words, is 12 mod 2 equal to 0? And the answer is yes. We then document uh, i, or 2 in this case, as a factor. And we set x equal to x divided by i. 
So x gets the new value of uh, 12 divided by 2, which is equal to 6. x is now 6. Then we loop up back to the top of the flowchart, and we set i equal to 2. Now back at the top, we ask ourselves, is x equal to 1? And that's not the case. x is equal to 6. We then divide x by i, or we divide 6 by 2 again. Is uh, 6 mod 2 equal to 0? And the answer is yes, so we found yet another, uh, another factor of uh, x. And we loop back to i equal 2. We ask ourselves, is x equal to 1? And again, that is not the case. x is equal to 3. We divide x by i, so we divide uh, 3 by 2, and we ask ourselves, is x mod i equal to 0? So in other words, is uh, 3 mod uh, 2 equal to 0? And this time, the answer is actually no. So what we do this time is to set i equal to i plus 1. So we increment i by 1. So instead of i being equal to 2, i is now equal to 3. We then ask ourselves again, is uh, 3 equal to 1? The answer is still no. We divide x by i, so we divide uh, 3 by 3. Is uh, 3 mod 3 equal to 0? And the answer is yes. So we document uh, 3 as a factor. And we set uh, x equal to x divided by i, or we assign the new value of uh, 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1, and we assign that to x. We then loop back to the top and set i equals to 2. And we then ask, is x equal to 1? And that is true this time x has now become equal to 1, and therefore we terminate the algorithm. In conclusion, the factors of 12 are 2, 2, and 3. Let us jump back over to Excel. Back in the VBA editor, the first thing I would like to do is to make a string named um, output, which has uh, no input, it's just an empty string. Next, I would like to define uh, i as uh, equal to 2, and then I may need to make a loop. And then many different types of loops we can use, but uh, I do not know how many iterations I need to run, so I'm gonna use a while loop rather than a for loop. So do until x equals one. So this was our termination criteria. Once x is equal to one, we terminate. So we're gonna keep looping or go through iteration to iterations until x becomes equal to one. So do until will initiate the loop, and to end the loop, we just write loop. So whatever is written in between here will be iterated several times. Uh, next, I need to determine if, uh, if x can be divided by the particular i that we are uh, trying out. So I need to use an if function. If x mod, uh, mod i is equal to 0, then and let's add the rest of the uh, if then else structure, else, and and if. So if x mod i is equal to 0, which means that x can be divided by 1, then we need to do certain things. Uh, we need to uh, document that uh, i is a factor of x, and we can do that using the uh, output uh, string we just made. So output is equal to output, and then uh, string concatenation, I'm adding a string here, uh, white space, x, which is going to represent not variable x, but a multiplication sign, or perhaps you could use the comma, it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to add the i that you're looking at. And next, I need to update the value of x. So x is going to be assigned with the value of its previous value divided by i. And then I need to set i equals to uh, 2. Else, I increment i. So i is equal to i plus 1. And in the end here, uh, we say that the uh, variable is equal to output. So if you go to the spreadsheet here, we have a number and then the factors. So we could try, for instance, uh, 12. And we write in there equal signs and then the name of the function we just made which was uh, uh, prime factorization and the input is going to be uh, cell b1 so let's see if it works and it does almost 
Uh, we get the correct uh, factors 2, 2 and 3, but I don't want the x to be there in the beginning. And I'm going to go back to the VBA editor. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and, oh, by the way, I realized here that we don't really need to say i is equal to 2. This is kind of redundant code, which happens all the time. So let's see. The problem is that we get this uh, multiplication sign or x sign in the beginning, which we don't want. So we need to have an additional if function here in, uh, nested inside of the, uh, the uh, outer if function. So let's see. Um, if output is uh, just an empty string, then we're going to do something. And uh, if that is not the case, then we can do as we already did. And then we need the uh, end if here. So if it is empty, then uh, output is still going to be equal to i. So let's see if it now works as it should. And it does. So let's just try out a few variables here. Let's see what happens if we take a prime number, 5 for instance. The factor of 5 is 5. Okay, what about... Uh, uh, 2,367. What about that? Well, that is uh, 3 times 3 times 263. So it's 263 then a prime number. Uh, I suppose it is. Uh, so we can basically put in any kind of variable in there or any kind of number, integer, I mean. Uh, however, we cannot have more than uh, 2 to the power of, uh, let's see, what is it? 2 to the power of, is it 16 perhaps? No, 2 to the power of... Uh, 15, which is uh, 32,768, because an integer in uh, in VBA cannot exceed this number. So if we have uh, 32,767, that should work. Indeed it does. What if it becomes 8? Well, now we get an error. So if you want integers that are greater than uh, this number, uh, we can change the type of variable up here. So instead of being an integer, we can go for long. Let's try now. So a million, something, something. And it works. So uh, there you go. Now we have a functioning uh, script that can uh, factorize uh, numbers. So if you need to help out uh, a child in elementary school with their homework, uh, now you have a script that can do this very efficiently and fast. So, um, but I'm sure if you look at the script, I'm sure there are ways to make this more efficient. Huh, would you look at that? Mr. Excel has a far better script. Interesting. Maybe I should call myself Dr. Excel. <laughs>